So this today's topic is STD optional. This is new in C++17. I mean, it has been provided from C++17 and it's kind of an enhancement. You will love this because we all face this problem what they're actually trying to solve here. So let's talk about the problem. Let's suppose there is some function and you call this function with some parameter and this return type is maybe something. But depending on the logic, sometime you return null pointer or null ptr or null or zero because you want to tell that it is not present what you was asking for is not present so if you was asking for some object if it is not present and you are asking in a form of pointer then it will return null pointer right and let's suppose you are asking some value if it is present or not let's say if it, it is integer then you will have some sentinel value which you will pre-assume that if they are returning minus one in that case i would assume that that value is not present and let's say if it is string, then you might return an empty string and you will check, okay, the length of the string is zero. That means nothing is received. So you are actually assuming so many things just for one thing that something is not present, something is absent. So you have denoted many sentinel values to tell that something is not present, then I will return this, but they have solved this problem. Now you have a class. Now let's talk about this. So this std optional is a template class. And as it is template, it can take like type here. You can say integer and then this is your value. So this is how it would look like. So let's look at the code and we'll understand this a little better because it's a better way to actually do the same thing what we've been doing since ages. So this is your code. I have tried to keep it very simple. Because as this is a template class, it has many functions. I mean, you go and explore that after watching this video. Okay. Don't just run because you will not have the fun. Then, I mean, I also will not have the fun then. So this is what we do, right? I mean, this get some string is, uh, the normal function, what function we call and this true meaning it will return something meaningful. And if, if I'm not sending true, I'm trying to simulate it here. And in next case, we'll just send false from here and it we'll see like what it is doing. So in true case where we are actually expecting some value, we'll initialize that value here. And this dereferencing operator has to be used to actually get the value from this optional class object because it contains the value what you are returning from there because it is an object which inside contains the value. So you have to dereference it or just call dot value. There is a function to actually get it. So it's very simple. See, I'm not checking anything if it is null or something because see, this is a string. I could have just done a written integer here, maybe some class object or anything. Now this is not a problem. You don't have to make all those assumptions or to check like if it is null pointer and all that. So it's very simple. See, I'm just assigning it here. And if it is present, this if condition will automatically detect that. And if it is present, it will print this meaning CPP nuts. And if it is not present, it will say no value. Now you're confused. Do I always have to use this inside if condition so that it will check? No, there is a member function has value. If you check that, it will tell you that, okay, it has the value or not. So let's quickly run this. I'll compile this. It is compiling. And if I run this CPP nuts, so it has the value. Now let's go for the false case. And now I'll compile and execute it it says no value. See, I'm not checking anything that this string, whatever the string or whatever it is returning is empty or whatever it is. So you can keep this as it is and just change the data type and it will always work. And now let's talk about like the few theory parts, why it is important. First point is it is important because you don't have to worry about the type checking because it is making your life easy to go for any type, this syntax is going to be the same. And second is code readability because your fellow programmer will see your code and they will understand that, okay, there is a possibility that something will not come because we are using optional here. So they will be well aware by just looking at the code that the expectation is someday you will call this function and you won't return or you won't get anything. And third is, to avoid the sentinel values. I already talked about the sentinel values. You choose minus one, minus five, minus 10, zero or empty string or null pointer to denote that what I was asking is not present. You denote all that absence by all these pre-assumed sentinel values. But sometimes it creates problem. If your 
fellow programmer is debugging that they won't know that okay if minus one is coming and you're checking minus one meaning what i mean was this not expected why you are checking explicitly the minus one i mean you have to write many comments and all that right but now they have given the way to actually handle all these problems in a beautiful way and don't think that uh, whether it is going to increase the performance or not this uh, update was i mean this enhancement was not for the performance or something this is for expressiveness like how your code is written how beautiful it can look if you are writing or how expressive it is for someone else who is reading your code to increase the readability of the code this is a phenomenal job so with this note so you know what you have to do if you like the video and learn something new don't forget to hit the like button and if you want to see more videos like this consider subscribing and share it with your friends man i mean they should also learn this so thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next videos bye bye take care